Hello, I'm Heather Kahn. When it comes to cancer treatment, there's a growing trend. It's called personalized medicine, and we are thrilled to have truly one of the world's foremost experts on cancer and genetics, Dr. Pierre Paulo Pandolfi. So good to have you with us. You are the scientific director of the Cancer Center at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, and we're very lucky to have you here today. Thank you for having me. We hear a lot about personalized medicine and cancer therapies. I want to ask you, what is the connection between genetic research and these types of treatments? So cancer and the treatment and personalized medicine is all about genetics. So what we have been able to discover uh, in the last few years due to a revolution, which is the ability to uh, inquire our yellow pages, our genome mm -hmm. in the cancer at large, is that uh, uh, cancer is driven by defects in the genes which control proliferation and survival of cells. If these genes are mutated, dysfunctional, the cancer cell misbehave, and the hope of personalized medicine is to fix the problem at the molecular level. And to give you a simple example for everybody to understand, if you have a car which is broken, you bring it to repair, and you fix the broken part. Until now, in the last 30 years, the only thing we could do is to trash the car. We wanted to kill, eradicate the cancer cell because we had no way to fix the problem. This was done and is still done with chemotherapy, with radiotherapy, with surgery. We had successes with these approaches, but it's obvious that this imposes on the patient tremendous toxicity because what you are simply doing is to bomb mm -hmm. your body in the hope that the cancer cell will be eradicated. The approach that we are now developing is completely different. We are not trying to kill, we are trying to fix. Mm -hmm. And we are fixing only the cancer cell, not the normal cell, because the normal cell has no problem. And so the drugs we are using are based to repair the molecular defects. And so the game is to understand the defect, to move uh, the knowledge uh, underlying cancer, and to understand what are the nodes that we can turn on and off to render the cell that uh, is misbehaving back to its normal uh, behavior. So we are not trying to eradicate the cancer cell. We are trying to convince the cancer cell to behave. Now, you've studied this in mice. How about humans, and how far away might we be from some new treatment? So the research we do is hand on hand with uh, with a mouse and human, and this is the, the strength of the approach. And I give you a simple example of the power of this approach, which is uniquely developed at our cancer center at the Beth Israel. The idea is to uh, create a replica hospital in which we can create little patients that we can then enroll in experimental trial in order to facilitate uh, drug testing and, and drug development. And why do we need that? Now, if cancer is one, if we have one type of prostate cancer, one type of breast cancer, it's reasonably easy to enroll 100 patients and to test the efficacy of a drug. But if you accept that cancer is not one, but 100 different types, mm -hmm. and if you want to test new drugs, and we have many drugs to test, if these types of cancer are many, you have a very important problem to fix, which is that you don't have enough patients to enroll in clinical trials. And so what we have decided to do to accelerate the drug testing and discovery is to replicate the many types of cancer in the mouse. So we have created the little patients that represent the 100 types of prostate cancer and breast cancer, and then we can enroll these patients in our mouse hospital into clinical trials, which when effective, we can bring back to the clinic. And are you comfortable and confident that these little mouse patients are similar to larger human patients and that the response will be the same? So the, the reason why I'm saying we are uh, backing uh, our discovery and our process with human data is that uh, uh, the strength of the approach is that we constantly verify the validity of the information in the human scenario. We call this approach co-clinical, meaning that uh, we run trials in the mice and in humans, and we synchronize and interrogate the information to make sure that the information that we, we get from the mouse hospital is valid and validated vis-a-vis -vis the information that we get from the human hospital. 
So we are not simply relying on the mouse data set, but we are using it to speed up the process. What are your most exciting and promising findings that you can share with us so far? As you may know, I'm uh, a great optimistic uh, uh, that we will uh, uh, really gain ground to the disease. And the reason why I am optimistic is that I have seen during my career one tumor type defeated. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, identify the genes of a form of leukemia that 15 years ago was a fatal killer and now is considered eradicated. And I've seen it cured following the same logic that we are discussing uh, today, understanding the defects, developing targeted therapies that would fix the molecular problem, using little mouse patients as a surrogate patient to optimize therapy, bring the therapy into the clinic. This happened in the last 15 years, and our knowledge today is 20 times, 100 times more deep. We have better tools, we have many more drugs. So I'm convinced that this same logic will allow us to gain ground to the disease in the years to come. You've seen tremendous progress in this area of research in your career from start until now. Tremendous change. Tremendous change, uh, and uh, as I said, I've seen uh, cancer therapy evolving from a brutal bombing of the cancer cell and of our body to a more intelligent approach, an empirical approach and an engineering approach mm -hmm. in which we understand what we are doing, so to speak. So it has evolved and it will evolve further. It will evolve further because, to give an example, now we can sequence and interrogate the cancer genome or our genome at large from A to Z. It is as if we were able to read the whole encyclopedia that controls our functions mm -hmm. in our bodies. And this applies also to other diseases, not only to cancer for very little money in a short time. So imagine that uh, you are admitted to the hospital. 30, 20 years ago, you would be diagnosed. Your cancer would be called prostate or breast cancer. Wouldn't be called a subtype of prostate and breast cancer. And you would be given the only thing they would be able to offer you, which is chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery. Now you will be admitted. Your cancer genome will be sequenced your cancer will be called, not prostate cancer, but uh, subtype 1 or 99. And then on the basis of the molecular knowledge, we'll be able to give drugs which are appropriate for your cancer. And this is the concept of personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. It's my cancer that will be treated, not a cancer. Well, thank you so much for being here. Such important work that you are doing. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Dr. Pandolfi from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center.